the warmth and gaiety of a successful party, the pleasure of friends amongst friends, the anticipation of new and interesting people to meet. These are the elements of an enjoyable evening. These are often the memorable occasions in life. This is a story that started at a party, gay, joyous, festive. This is a story of a party that ended with fear and horror. It was a cry for help Sherlock Holmes will never forget. It was a lovely party. Wonderful party, Janet. Good night, Russell. No one deserves happiness more than you and Russell. Thank you, John. Good night. Wish that John were just one half as attentive as Russell. If you ever want to get rid of him, send him to me. <laughs> Good night, Louisa. Good night. Good night. I love them all. But is it unkind of me to say that I'm glad we're finally alone? Not unkind at all. Just leave everything till tomorrow, Susan. Thank you, madame. Good night. Good night, madame. Very happy this evening, darling. I really am the luckiest woman in the whole world. Our first anniversary. I wanted you to be happy this year. It couldn't be any other way with you. It might have been. Impossible. There may be a deep and dark side to my nature. Of course there is, darling. All interesting men have dark sides to their nature. Possibly even black. Almost certainly black. I'm a murderer. Of course you are. More than one. Innumerable times, I'm sure. Seven times. And are you going to murder seven times again? Once again. Anyone I know? You. Oh, wonderful. And will you give me warning? I'm giving you warning. Will you kill me with... Kindness? No. Like this. Russell! Russell! Russell, you're, Russell, you're, you're hurting me. Russell. Russell, whatever came over you? I told you, my darling. Tomorrow, at exactly nine o'clock, I will strangle you as I have strangled seven before. You're serious? About the art of murder, I am always serious. I've used it as it suited my convenience. Death is my only true friend. Russell, Russell, don't talk like that. You don't believe me now, my dear. But you'll think about it. You'll come to know and to fear. Then you'll fly to the police and tell them what has happened. They may believe you. They may not. And tomorrow, at exactly nine o'clock, I will kill you. Happy anniversary, my dear. you tell us the whole story as it happened. It might be easier that way. Of course. I'm Mrs. Russell Partridge. Your husband's the art collector? That's right. Ah, oh, he's a wonderful man, your husband. I first had the pleasure of meeting him when we were guarding the French collection that came over. He's a wonderful man. Everyone says so. Yes. Now, 
And tell me what's troubling you, Mrs. Partridge. You can rest assured that for your own sake, as well as your husband's, Scotland Yard will do everything it possibly can. It was nothing. Nothing? I was mistaken. I can see it now. Probably the result of too much party last night and an overactive imagination. Well, perhaps you'd care to tell me about it anyway. It may help to dispel any doubt you have. It isn't necessary, really. I I'm sorry to have taken so much of your time, Inspector. I'm sure you're a very busy man. Mrs. Partridge, I'm very pleased to hear you feel this way now. What do you mean? Your husband told me of the incident last night. He was afraid you wouldn't be able to overcome the delusion. My husband told you? Yes, he was here this morning. What did he tell you? Only that you were suddenly overcome by the idea that he intended to harm you. You're over that now, I see. My husband told you that. May I say, Mrs. Partridge, that in my experience here at Scotland Yard, I've met many people who thought for a short time that they were being persecuted. But it passes. And your husband will help you, I'm sure. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. What do you make of that, sir? Follow, Wilkins. Very good, sir. Sherlock Holmes. Yes, Mr. Holmes has just gone downstairs to look at that, Miss. Won't you please come in? Thank you. Oh, please excuse me. I oh, would you like to sit over here? Uh, 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 would you care for anything? I, I have some fresh tea made. No, thank you. You say Mr. Holmes will be right back. Oh, yes. Oh, oh forgive me. I, I'm Dr. Watson. How do you do? I'm Mrs. Russell Partridge. Oh, your husband's the art collector? Yes. Oh, I, I met him not long ago. Wonderful man. Thank you. Of course, I'm not much an authority on art myself. I just like what I like, you know. But I understand he's one of our leading judges. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Wonderful man. Interesting, too. Yes. I think perhaps I'd better leave. Oh. I was wrong to think that... What a beautiful day, Watson. Perfectly exquisite. We really must make an effort to get out and about more often and see the beauties that I... I beg your pardon, madam. I didn't realize we had a guest. M may I present Mr. Holmes? This is Mrs. Russell Partridge. I do forgive the exuberance of my entrance, madam. I'm delighted to meet you. Won't you sit down? I, I think that I... I realize the situation is a delicate one. How do you know? Because uh, you didn't wish it to be known that you'd come here. So you left your carriage at the corner of the street and walked. You saw me? No, no, as a matter of fact, I didn't. But I observed that the hem of your skirt has picked up a certain amount of dust from the street. And though you undoubtedly came by carriage, because your shoes, which are extremely fashionable ones, were not meant for comfortable walking. Mr. Holmes, I need your help. In what way, Mrs. Partridge? I believe my husband is going to kill me. Russell Partridge? Why do you believe this, Mrs. Partridge? He told me he would, last night. Why, that's impossible. I had the same reaction at first, Dr. Watson. It couldn't be true. Not by Russell. As everyone tells me, he's such a wonderful man. And when did he say he was going to do this? Tonight, at nine. And then he said, he said something impossible, Mr. Holmes. He said, 
I would be the eighth. Excuse me. Hello, Inspector. What can I do for you? Hello, Dr. Watson. I want to speak to Mrs. Partridge. Now, how do you know she's here? I had a follow from Scotland Yard. Oh, I see. I'm sorry to have to do this, Mrs. Partridge, but I was afraid you might still think you were in danger. I see now that you do. I'm sorry. But Lestrade, Mrs. Partridge has just told us that her husband is going to kill her tonight at nine o'clock. Mr. Partridge came to the yard this morning to tell me that his wife was going to call on me. How did he know? He said you told him you were going to call. That's not true. I decided to do it this morning. It was ten o'clock, I remember. Mrs. Partridge, at ten o'clock, your husband was still sitting in my office. Mr. Holmes, I don't understand. I don't understand how Russell knew I would go to see Inspector Lestrade. I swear I never told him. Everything I told you is true, exactly as it happened. Do you believe that? Oh, excuse me, my name is Partridge. I believe my wife is here. Yes, indeed she is. Will you come in? Russell. I'm sorry I'm late, my dear. I was detained at the gallery. Are you ready to leave? How did you know I was here? How did I know you were here? Yes. How did you know? But you said you'd be here. You told me to meet you here. Have you forgotten? I... I must have forgotten. Excuse me. Forgive me for interrupting you, gentlemen, and thank you for any consideration you may have shown my wife. Good day. Good day. Well, I'd say that young woman was heading for a complete nervous breakdown. Mm, I've seen these delusion cases before. Hmm. A very interesting man. And a very distinctive one. When I went down to the tobacconist, I wondered why he was standing at the corner of the street watching this flat so intently. And now I think I know why. Yes, indeed, a very, very interesting man. Well, that's straight. They were Two incidents in the romantic life of Russell Partridge. In the first case, his fiance ran off with another man and was never seen again. She ran off with an American, didn't she? Was this confirmed or assumed, Lestrade? Well, I don't know. And in the other case, he was uh, left at the altar, I believe the expression is. Yes, that's right. Was that girl ever heard of again? She ran off with a South American, I believe. But really, Holmes, it just isn't logical. If Russell Partridge really intends to kill his wife, he's not going to tell her about it first. That would be putting a rope round his neck. Would it be? Do either of you really believe that? It isn't logical, Holmes. It isn't usual, Lestrade. But this man is just amusing himself. He's an insane fanatic. And unless you get a warrant out for his arrest, I, for one, won't be responsible. Now, look here, Holmes. I can't ask for a search warrant every time a man's left at the altar. What would you be looking for anywhere? The evidence of the seven other murders he told his wife he'd committed. Holmes, you must understand it. Well... Or the eighth will be on your hands. Going completely against his own judgment, Lestrade had the search warrant issued. And Scotland Yard entered the Partridge House and searched with the thoroughness and efficiency that only that organization was capable of. From basement to attic, no wall, no object was left without meticulous examination. Holmes directed the entire investigation. I have never seen him so intense, so insistent. And at the end, so completely 
frustrated. If Partridge was the criminal Holmes believed, there was no question he had won. Naturally, Mr. Partridge, the Yard will assume responsibility for putting things back as they were. Thank you, Inspector. I, I, I do hope you'll forgive us bursting in like this. It's uh, <laughs> Mr. Holmes who... I understand Mr. Holmes very well. I suppose I'd feel the same way under the circumstances. Is it Watson? A few minutes after seven, five minutes since you last asked me. It's there, Watson. It's there. I'll swear it's there. What's there? The evidence that Mrs. Partridge isn't lying. But her husband is a murderer. It's in that house somewhere. I'll swear it. But you've searched all over the house, Holmes. You've measured every inch of it. I know, Watson, but it is there. I've overlooked something. But unless I can find out what it is, that girl is going to be murdered in two hours. He said nine o'clock. Even if he intends to murder the girl, he doesn't have to do it on schedule. But he does. That's part of his disease. That man works like a clock. He tempts the police by having the victim report the murder in advance, and then he has to complete his game by murdering on the moment, the exact moment. Ah. Now where are you going? Out. That I can see, but where? For a walk. We believe we searched every inch of that house. Now I've got to find the one place that I missed. Mr. Holmes. Good evening, Mrs. Partridge. I realize the entrance is somewhat unconventional, but then so are the circumstances. I believe I made the climb unseen. What are you doing here? I want to prevent you from doing this. I can't stay here. You must. If I stay here, kill me. Mrs. Partridge, I know your life is in danger, but if you leave here, I can't guarantee your safety. If you stay and help me, we may yet have a chance. A chance? Yes. It's my theory that your husband will try to... Janet! You were so quiet up here, I thought perhaps something was wrong. Are you planning a trip? No. Going out, perhaps? I was. Then I changed my mind. Hmm. Why did you change your mind? Because I think you're lying. You're insane, Russell. But I don't believe you're dangerous. I shall stay here tonight and leave in the morning. I'm glad you feel like that, Janice. It shows you have great strength of character. Where did you kill your other seven victims? Here, in this house. How did you dispose of their bodies? The bodies are still here. But the police searched the house. I know, I watched them. Very efficient. Especially with Mr. Holmes to guide them. A very clever man, Mr. Holmes. It was a tremendous temptation not to tell him where to look. It's a quarter to nine. You have 15 minutes. Why don't you run away? Very well done indeed, Mrs. Partridge. I must apologize for the oversight. What do we do now? Now we wait. Only 
one. One place I forgot to look. I'm going to step outside now, and I want you to count up to ten, go to the head of the stairs, and then start slowly down. Will you do that for me? I'll try. Don't worry. I'll be there. Ten seconds, remember? You are afraid. No, I'm not. The others were afraid. Don't take that last step. How did you get in? The important thing is that I'm here and that your wife is safe. And because of your premature revelation of yourself, so am I. I'm sure it is not against the law of England to walk up the stairs in one's own house. Besides, my wife is completely unharmed. And the other seven, Mr. Partridge? What other seven, Mr. Holmes? You searched this afternoon. The other seven exist in my poor wife's sick imagination. Yes, and in mine, too. I know where they are now. Really? Oh. What's happened? Get the poker from the fire, Watson. The poker? Yes, the poker. Imagine there is a way of opening your unique coffin, Mr. Partridge. And if not, Dr. Watson here is more than capable of breaking it open. of his seven victims, Watson. Each step a coffin, and each coffin a monument to the most insane killer I have ever met. <laughs> <laughs> 